Uh, Fernando is going to join us to talk a little bit more about this facility and also just some of the big trends he's seeing in the industry. Right, Fernando? Is that right? So uh, please welcome for, uh, Fernando Solanas. Hello, everyone. So, you know, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today actually talking about uh, Telemundo and some of the IP transition at Telemundo. That's a, it's a great piece because, as Jeff was saying, this is, uh, this is the largest uh, 2110 installation. And some of the unique things about this facility beyond size was actually some of the timing of when the decisions are being made to build such a facility and where we were in the industry as far as transition into the IP space. So not just standards, but really, can they be done? What do we learn uh, from these things? So there's, you know, a lot, a lot went on here doing the build stages and doing the decision making stages. And although, um, you know, the next generation IP facilities continue to grow and they, and they get bigger and bigger, the, the idea is, is that you know, Telemundo's in the right place now to kind of be in that day two workflow operation, as Jeff was saying, is this, you now that you have it, now you kind of start to realize some of the flexibility that IP really brings into, into the environment. So when we talk about, um, you know, Everts, if you've seen any of my presentations in the past, we talk a lot about uh, Telemundo because the reality was is there was nothing that was greenfield of this size. So the challenges of not just getting IP workflows and so forth, encapsulation, decapsulation uh, to work, but to actually work in in such a massive build and in a relatively short period of time. Um, so this was, you know, a huge challenge for uh, all of the vendors that that participated, and and definitely, uh, you know, a, a great win as you see from such a great facility. Um, when you know we talk about IP and so forth, we talk a bit about you know network infrastructure and backbone and so forth. Um, you know, for ten thousand network ports uh, at ten gig, that's that's a huge number, and that's roughly the number of ports that um, that Telemundo has available to them today. So it's a huge quantity of network infrastructure that came into play in this facility. Now, you know, ten thousand ports may not be big for or a lot for a huge telco or so forth, but for a broadcaster, um, you know, that ends up being in in numbers of that you know SDI didn't even reach and now we're talking about that in a network infrastructure environment so as you can imagine um, there's a lot of challenges with building facilities of this scale um, the timing of this meant that you know the standards itself were just getting hashed out right TR03 was fully kind of on the way to becoming 2110 um, not sure exactly what day the decisions were being made for when this would be 2110 or should it be dash six or should it go even Aspen at the time. Um, but at the end of the day, the 2110 decision was made, which was a great decision because it ended up being the 2110 um, had enough in it already to actually go to air, which was fantastic. But huge, huge challenges to make that happen. And I think um, a lot of it is wrapped around gateways, of course, because the technology itself was so new. And frankly, it's still quite new. I cover a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the challenges that exist, some that are specific to this facility and some that are actually specific to ongoing builds uh, of today. So... You know, control uh, and interoperability, I think this is going to be uh, something that a lot of the, the, the speakers are going to talk about when they, when they mention some of the challenges in, in IP. I mean, we, we seem to get fixated on the hardware and the network infrastructure. Is it COTS? Is it, you know, uh, you know proprietary? The reality is, is it has nothing to do with that. I mean, there's, you know, the, the real challenges are what do you do with your control system? How does that control system communicate with the rest of the infrastructure? Um, you know, the language of 2110 or the standard of 2110 uh, merely gets the content from one area to the other. But as far as what communication language is it ISO 4, ISO 5? Is it going to be some proprietary method of talking to these devices? Is it going to be IGMP? Um, these are these are some of the, the the real things that you know people should be thinking about when you're talking about building facilities, particularly very very large facilities where you're looking for that best of breed and that um, you know interoperability. 
audio complexity this is one that you know never seems to go away we we um you know we talk a lot a lot about video we we always focus on um you know the you know that network infrastructure how do i get my content in and out and so forth but we we seldomly really get into the granularity of audio and we um you know this is this is another piece that we you should really start to think about and i'll and i'll get into a little bit more detail um timing um, another one, another one that seems to, you know, when we get into IP, um, while you can still time via Blackburst, some people don't think you can, but you actually can. There are still ways of doing that. Probably best to go into PTP, right? But there's, that's something that needs to be part of the, the ongoing discussions when you're talking about building IP facilities, just to really get into those audio timing questions. And then functionality at scale. Um, you know, it's very easy to um, to demonstrate, you know, signals moving in and out of a, a, of a small a little POC and so forth. But once you start to grow, uh, this is really where the cracks start to show. So that's where it's important that you, you know, you really consider, um, you know, the interoperability in these devices and the functionality of these devices at, at a very large scale. So... Control and orchestration. This is, um, I put this one first, and this, I can talk for hours about this one because the reality is, is that this is the one that's arguably the, the most difficult. Um, you know, it, it'd, be, it'd be easy for me to say that, hey, it's, uh, it's all, you know, roses out there when it comes to interoperability in IP. It's, it's arguably the worst. And it's, um, you know, while everts to everts equipment, um, you know, we can say, yeah, yeah, it works fantastic. The truth is it's not always everts to everts equipment. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things we don't make. There's a lot of things that you may consider uh, slightly better from another manufacturer. Whatever your reasons, the reality is, is they need to be, intero you know, interoperable. And, you know, we focus a lot with Magnum uh, to have that interoperability. We, you know, we, we strive to have interoperability across all platforms. Um, there is... You know, a question that I get asked a lot is, is it ISO 4, ISO 5 compliant? And, and the answer is, is, you know, Magnum is ISO 4, ISO 5 compliant. Um, and it's, you know, for those that question that compatibility, not just with, you know, our devices or other people's devices, think of it this way. There's not a vendor out there that wants to, you know, put something that isn't um, compliant to that, let's say, a great um, broad product like an or, or a function like an NMOS or ISO 4, ISO 5 compliancy is it makes it easier for us to work with other vendors. So if you want to sell a control system these days, you frankly need to be ISO 4, ISO 5 compliant, and you need to be able to talk that language to simplify it. If not, we've got to develop drivers for every single you know, product that we, we have to communicate, which brings us to this native control. Um, this is a sticking point because some people ask, well, if you have native control of, over a product without using ISO 4 or ISO 5, is that better or is that worse than, than sticking to ISO 5 or ISO 4? Um, you know, we have a couple of products, for example, that uh, Magnum has both ISO 5 compatibility and also native control. And in some cases, the you know, native control, albeit proprietary to uh, that product, uh, actually may offer some more flexibility than the ISO 4, ISO 5. Maybe in the future it won't. Maybe in the future the ISO 5 one will surpass that native control. But the truth is, is that at the end of the day, you can't forget what we're doing. And that is, we're making television, we're doing these productions. So, you know, we've got to stop getting fixated on, well, it's not ISO 5, so I don't want it, or it's proprietary. You know, again, it's about how's it going to work? Can you get it to work? Don't lock me into something. Let's make it flexible, make it easy, and, and get on with, you know, the next technology decision. Um, the other one is, is, you know, is IGMP. We, you know, we, we get a lot of questions, particularly as, you know, I'm an Everts guy with, uh, you know, the EXE and so forth. And what about IGMP? The truth is, is you can use IGMP in some, in some cases. It, it works consistently. In other cases, it doesn't. It, you know, it's, it's really about the design and, and the, the facility that you're looking to build the scale, the functionality you require, whether, you know, you, you're looking for clean switching in some areas, or salvo switching in other areas. There's, there's a, a number of different reasons that vendors will try and push one way or the other. The truth is, is that most vendors can work in, in any combination of ways to make that facility work. We're, you know, and Everts obviously is pretty proud of, of, of the installation and the scale of which we make facilities work. Um, the, the audio one is, is important because, 
there's this huge uh, back and forth about uh, what about audio shuffling and the grooming of it? If, if everything was uh, mono flow in 2110, we, you know, we talk about uh, the fact that I can make one multicast for every single channel of audio versus these groups and so forth. Um, Yes, you can route any multicast that has a you know a stereo pair or a mono floor or a group of eight or a group of four um, of channels of audio across any device, and you can mix right by uh, or shuffle by routing the multicast to a different slot on that IPG or that destination device. Um, but at the end of the day, an audio subsystem or audio grooming device, in 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 my belief, is going to exist for quite some time. Number one is you know, facilities aren't being built at mono level, which means that you still need some sort of way of tweaking uh, and modifying the audio or manipulating the audio. And number two, particularly for the next foreseeable future, is the fact that you need it as a life raft. It's going to be that device that's going to take from one vendor that only supports, you know, four groups of four audio to another vendor that only supports, you know, two groups of eight. And it's going to be that life raft to be able to manipulate and adjust the audio to your destinations. So, you know, when you hear this whole, the yes, 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 uh, can be done in complete monoflow and so forth, I assure you building a facility of this size in entirely monoflow um, you know, with one IP or one multicast for every every channel would be uh, substantially difficult. Um, so, you know, timing, again, this is a, another huge build. This was arguably at the time, I'm going to assume it still is uh, the largest PTP uh, facility in, in 2110 with over 600 uh, host devices requiring timing in PTP. So quite complex, particularly, uh, you know, when let me tell you, Blackburst was a whole lot easier to deal with. And I think Jeff mentioned, you know, that it's not easier. Uh, certainly isn't cheaper and it, and, it, and it isn't easier. There's reasons to be here. The workflows, the manip, you know, the, the, what it brings to the future is fantastic. And this, we're starting to see that, that, you know, the fruits of people's labor deploying an IP today is really coming now with workflows and so forth. But I think it's important to note the challenges of getting there, uh, particularly at scale. Um, this is uh, something actually I think this came from Chris Swisher who's going to present a little later. Um, this was a, you know, the timing network built to, for this particular facility. So actually using slave master clocks to distribute timing um, ac across the facility itself rather than and focusing as a boundary function on, on the EXEs itself. So, you know, a unique way of doing it, but a great way of servicing a huge number of, of, uh, of the host devices requiring a PTP. Um, this number is really huge, so 150,000 multicasts. This is roughly the number of multicasts used uh, within this plant. Um, I will say that you know, the, you know, Everts uh, Magnum has surpassed this number in, in another facility belonging to the same organization, um, but the, only because of workflow. This is still by far the largest end cap and DCAP 2110 build, but now with these, as we're starting to take advantage of IP, now we're starting to take advantage of, you know, manipulating these workflows, manipulating multicast flows across a plant. So 150,000 uh, multicast flow has, you know, has already been surpassed, which is incredible. I mean, if you would think, uh, you know, that we would be using multicast to this degree, uh, it, it really is quite, uh, you know, in incredible feat. 12,000 uh, by 13,000, that's roughly the size of uh, what Telemundo is if you look at it from kind of an SDI equivalent uh, for production. And Chris will get into a bit more detail, I'm sure, of, of, of how this is all utilized. And again, 12,000 by 2,000, so huge numbers we're talking about. And as we alluded earlier, building this in SDI would have been uh, really, really challenging. So. In this particular build, I know it's you know, 15 minutes to kind of talk about a, a, a detailed case study is quite challenging, in, in particularly when it's this big. Uh, here, it's, it's wrapped around Magnum, so that was really kind of uh, the, the piece that's holding this stuff together. There's a, a ton of gateways in this build, and, and again, the timing of it uh, led to that. Uh, but it's great because the back-end infrastructure is now all IP. So as you kind of move to that day two flexibility and day two of, you know, remove a gateway, add a native device and so forth, the whole foundation is built, uh, built on it. And the next facilities that are, are built and so forth have similar foundations with, you know, slightly more, in, you know, uh, interoperability, if you will, uh, across devices. Um, at the end of the day, IP is here to stay, whether, you know, whether it's uh, compressed or uncompressed, uh, 
uh, functionality and so forth. I think everybody agrees that uh, IP is going to benefit uh, our industry as, as it well needs it. Uh, it is going to make workflows more efficient uh, for the future, and, and definitely uh, it's, it's a, a plus for us. The tool sets, uh, you know, uh, I'm really, if the, if, if the last message that I can leave here about, you know, just building general in IP is, again, it's not about all about just network infrastructure. It's not about a, any particular one device, but it's actually more about how devices talk together and who manages that. What infrastructure control system is going to talk to all of these devices that you bring into these builds and ensure that everything works as smoothly as the committed pieces are tends to be. So again, working with different pieces, this happens to be Vistalink. This, uh, you know, getting, getting into and kind of seeing the granularity of, of the multicast flows and so forth, the tools are the ones that are going to make this facility build easier and getting into them is where the, you know, making sure that you have visibility into this net new environment is, is going to be key. So I thank you uh, very much for your time, and uh, I look forward to kind of listening to the rest of the presentations for the day, particularly uh, Chris and, and, and Dave talking about the build in, in itself. Thank you very much.